Hello everyone and welcome back to another exciting edition of Biographic, the show in which I, Matt, the Game Boy, take you through the highs and lows of the Game Boy library, one cart at a time. This week we're going to be looking at one of my childhood favourites that perhaps doesn't hold up to my expectations. It's Mega Man 2. Ah, Mega Man 2. The game that, despite sharing a name with perhaps the greatest of the NES titles, known for its memorable music and some of the best level design in the entire Mega Man series, doesn't quite live up to its older brother. In fact, Mega Man 2 is often considered to be the worst of the Game Boy Mega Man games, by fans and even by Mega Man's creator, Kaiji Inafune. Why, you might ask? Well, it's all down to the game's developers, Biox. For those of you with the Sega Game Gear, the name Biox might ring a bell, as they're the folks responsible for the port of Rise Star and a game called Factory Panic. But unlike Dr. Wily's Revenge's developers, Minakuchi Engineering, Biox was not as familiar with the Rockman franchise and it definitely shows through in the game. This entry into the series follows the usual handheld Mega Man formula. Four bosses, Wily's Castle, Boss Rush, exclusive Game Boy only boss, Wily himself. Naturally, it uses the four robot masters from Mega Man 2 that the previous game didn't Woodman, Airman, Metal Man, and Clashman. Wily's Castle this time around isn't its own stage from the get go, but instead makes you play a stage for each robot master from Mega Man 3 instead. The four chosen for this game are Top Man, Needle Man, Magnet Man, and Hard Man. Yep, Hard Man! <clears throat> Defeating one of these Robot Masters will give you their weapon, which in turn can be used to defeat another Robot Master a little bit easier. After defeating a robot, you get to see a cool screen of Mega Man and his dog Rush that tells you the power-up you've just received. Sometimes you'll also get lucky and get one of Rush's powers, such as Rush Marine or Rush Jet. But these powers are kind of forced into Mega Man 2 at the last second, and only really come in handy in Wily's Castle. Which is a shame, because they could have easily mixed up the gameplay a bit more. Unlike the first Game Boy title, the levels really don't reflect their NES counterparts all that well. They feel like stripped down versions of the original stages, but with weird sound effects in the place of the Mega Man ones, simplified sprites, and lots of health, ammo, and extra live drops around the place. Seriously, I don't think I've ever seen this many extra lives in a Mega Man game ever. Look at that! I even got two to drop on top of each other, it's insane! This brings me to most people's biggest gripe with Rockman World 2. It's that the game is pretty damned easy. In fact, it wasn't until I got to Clashman that I even felt like I was playing a Mega Man game. As you can completely half ass the first three Robot Masters with no trouble at all. For new players to Mega Man games, this is probably the best entry point to the series for this reason, as you don't have to worry so much about pattern memory from the get-go, nor do you have to worry that a single misstep could send you right back to the start of the stage, as there's a pretty generous checkpoint system in place in Mega Man 2, not to mention unlimited continues, as well as a password system if you're playing the game on the go. The game also introduces the iconic E-Tank into the handheld games, although their quantity and frequency means you can be quite liberal in your use of them, and they can act as a safety net for when things do go truly full-on Mega Man. A lot of people also take serious offence to this game's music. Well, because it's not the exact same score from Mega Man 2, the numbers that are carried over from the original game are raised to a higher octave, and people complain that they sound a little tinny as a result. But I really don't have a problem with them, to be honest. I mean, if you're not comparing it to the NES original, for me, as a Game Boy score, it sounds fine. If anything, the critique here seems to be that the new pieces aren't done by Takashi Tetishi, but by Kenja Yamakaze. The one thing I really do have an issue with in Mega Man 2 is the portable exclusive boss, however. 
In Wily's Revenge, we got Enka, a cool-looking, tough-to-battle robot who was the first of the Mega Man killers. That name alone says badass. In Mega Man 2, we get Quint. Your eyes do not deceive you, dear viewer. That's Mega Man Sprite on a pogo stick with Quick Man's helmet and Proto Man's glasses. While the game doesn't go into detail at all why you're fighting this thing, the manual does go into some detail, and that's pretty depressing. Apparently, he's Mega Man from a utopian future, 37,426 years into the future, that Dr. Wily dragged back in time and brainwashed. It's absolutely barking. I guess they must have snuck this one under the radar while in a food was on holiday or something. I'm also not overly fond of the Dr. Wily fight at the end of the game, as not only does his scale seem to be completely warped on each stage of his boss fight, but the pogo stick weapon you get from Quint to make this battle a little easier is absolutely useless. So you'll end up having to take him out with a good old fashioned Mega Buster anyways. But I believe if you look past this simplistic level design, soften difficulty curve, and that it doesn't feature the Game Boy equivalent of its namesake score, Mega Man 2 is a pretty fun game. For existing fans of the series, it offers a portable Mega Man title that while it doesn't feel 100% as it should, offers a fun game that can be picked up and enjoyed on your travels without the worry of accidentally throwing your console at another commuter because you can't get the boss pattern down. For newcomers to the series, Mega Man 2 can serve as your introduction to the way Mega Man games work, even if it won't fully prepare you for the hardships that lie ahead for those who run the gauntlet of the Blue Bomber. Announcement so, actually, after playing Mega Man 2, and now that I finally own Mega Man 5, I was thinking of doing something called Mega Me, where I play all of the Mega Man games through for the duration of May. Obviously, I've done Mega Man 1, i.e. Dr. Wily's Revenge, I've just done 2, but what do you folks feel about me playing 3, 4, and 5 for the next couple of weeks' instalments? Please let me know in the comments down below. If I don't get any responses, then I'll probably just play something like Sagia next week. Who knows? And that brings us to the end of another episode of Biographic, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you have enjoyed. If you have, please click the subscribe button and share it on wherever you share things about games and let some other people know about the channel if you think they'll enjoy it as well. You can check out some of our other biographic videos and where I look at the highs and lows of the Game Boy library one cart at a time. Why not check out some of our Boy Curious titles, which are some bootlegs and oddities for the Game Boy, not to mention unlicensed carts. And then you can check out our All The Glory! episodes which are Game Boy Long Plays where I cut out all of the deaths, leaving you with all of the glory. Okay Game Boys and Girls, please let me know as I've said in the comments down below if you think I should do some more Mega Man games this month. If not, I shall see you next week and game on.